Good morning, everyone. How are you going? Welcome to worship again with us today. Morning, Eggers. <laughs> um, listen, before Richard comes and uh, um, does the official welcome and, and prayer, um, we just got to work through a couple of COVID things. Um, so this is only our third week doing it, so I expect there to be always a little bit of a few little problems and hiccups the way we're doing it. Everything's going pretty well. We just need to change a few of the things that we've been doing so one when you come down to for communion or any time make sure that you do keep your distance so don't bunch up in a line at the back and then come down a meter and a half apart just to make me happy so just if you can always keep that meter and a half past so that uh, apart so that if someone was to come and see what we're doing then they're not going to have any reason to say we're doing the wrong thing and to keep us safe as cool of course um, the other thing is with communion um, the cups will be on the right hand side this morning the idea is that if you come down to pastor and take the bread and with that you need to cup your hands you cannot take the bread from the pastor because if you touch his gloves then he'll need to re-glove all right so if you can play, put your hands like this and the pastor will put the pastor will put the bread in your hand you can then eat the bread and then you can grab the cup which is on the right hand side so instead of having it on the left hand side so you don't pick it up and then you go oh hang on how am i gonna you know all right so the cup is afterwards on the right hand side and then there will be a small there'll be a bin to put that in next to it right so put the put it straight in there then when you go back go back down the uh northern aisle don't come down through the center please if you're sitting on this side you need to come down through the side and work your way back through the pew same with that side, work through the pew. Don't come back down through the centre. Um, I think that's all. We are, the LCA, I think, I don't know if it's a government thing or LCA, we are going to need a marshal. All groups are going to need a marshal. I believe that marshal is someone that's going to be checking to make sure this is all done. Now, I will need a volunteer to do that. You don't get a gun. <laughs> so just remember that. It's not going to be as fun as you think. <laughs> and you have to be over 18, that's right. I haven't actually read that part of it, but I'll, I'll go through it this week and we'll work that out. Um, all right, Richard, thank you. You did get a badge. Thanks, Terry. Just before we start, I'd just like to welcome you all, everyone who, uh, who is here today and also watching. Uh, thank you for joining us in worship this morning very grateful that we can be here and worship our Lord this morning, uh, especially any, any visitors with us or any guests with us this morning, much welcome to have you also. Um, before we start, um, I'd like to uh, open with a prayer, so please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your precious gift, your, your Son, for forgiveness, life and salvation. To be with, with us and our Saviour, thank you for bringing our congregation, our family, safety, safely together in your house to worship and praise you. Thank you for your gifts of baptism. Let us be reminded this morning. Touch our hearts and minds that we may know you in your living word of scripture. Be with us now in worship. Bless us. Be with us also as we partake in your special holy sacrament of Holy Communion and as we all confess our sinful nature to you, O Lord. May your Holy Spirit be upon us, be with us as we confess our faith, especially be with Pastor Graham as he leads us in worship. Give, us, give him wisdom and guidance as he encourages all of us. Be with those who also give their talents in some way to make this worship special. Uh, help us to share your word to others via DVD or electronically, we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You 
alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength and shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You're my friend and you are my brother, even though you So much more than anything. You alone are my strength and shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. Thus says the Lord, who gathers the outcasts of Israel. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I ask those uh, members who are celebrating their baptismal birthday to come forward and light a candle, please. The Lord God extends his church through baptism, making members through the waters and the word of holy baptism. And so let us pray uh, and thank God for making you his through baptism. Gracious Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your gifts to us, especially for making you a member of our family through baptism. These people from the youngest ones to the, elder, to the oldest ones, uh, are your members and were made your members through water and your holy word through baptism. Enable these people uh, to continue to live for you and to live out the grace of their baptism. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A 
Okay, now to celebrate our, uh, our baptismal unity, we're going to sing the song, One Family. Friends in Christ, let us confess our sins to God our Father and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. We confess that we are born in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. We deserve your eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Amen. I ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned and do you repent of your sins? Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and do you desire forgiveness in his name? Amen. Do you intend with the help of the Holy Spirit to live as in God's presence and to strive daily to lead a holy life even as Christ has made you holy? Amen. As a called and ordained servant of the word I announce the grace of God to all of you on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command I forgive the sins of all of you who repent and believe in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. The psalm for today is Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us. And may his face shine upon us. That your way may be known may be known upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. 
let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. Glory, Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forevermore. Amen. Let us pray for boldness in prayer. Thank you, God of the nations, for calling all kinds of people into your kingdom, even though none of us deserve your great love. Make us confident in praying to you for our own needs and for the needs of others. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please remain seated for the first two readings, which will be read by Carl and Tammy's daughter. <laughs> The first reading for this Sunday comes from Isaiah chapter 56 verse 1, 6 to 8. God's people will include foreigners. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold my fast covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Thus says the Lord who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them beside those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading for this Sunday comes from Romans chapter 11, various verses. The salvation of the Jews as well as the Gentiles. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once obedient, disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost is written in chapter 15 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, reading from verse 10. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offence when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind man guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, 
theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for your mercy to all people. Give us faith to ask for your help in all our needs, knowing your great love for us. Amen. Please be seated to sing the next song, Amazing Grace. Grace, mercy and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. 
My address for this morning is based on the first reading for today, which you heard Miss Haby read from Isaiah chapter 56. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in our first reading for today, the Lord God is comforting us, promising to gather his people together. We recall in Matthew's gospel that Jesus lamented he cried out over Jerusalem, wishing he could gather the Jews together as a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings. The Pharisees and Sadducees didn't want Jesus to gather them or anybody else to himself. Compare what a mother hen does to what a human mother does with their respective offspring. The human mother will take the little one in her arms, hold the child on her chest, caress the, this little gift from God and give him or her a tender kiss on the forehead. That's a very close, personal, intimate and maternal relationship she is having with her child. A love shown as only a mother can. Our Heavenly Father doesn't desire to have that kind of relationship with you, his child. No, he wants one that's much closer than that, one that's even more tender. He sends us his Holy Spirit so that we would call out Abba Father. The fact that God wants us to call him Abba Father means that God desires a much closer relationship, something like a child calling his father daddy. But the relationship God desires to have with us is even closer than that. You see, God clearly wants to gather you and all the rest of his faithful people to himself. God is the one who made you. God is the one who placed you in your mother's womb. God clearly knows you better than you know yourself. God gave you the faith to believe in his son Jesus. God sent his Holy Spirit to create in you the faith you have. God desires to call and gather us to himself, righteous and holy. But on our own merits, we don't meet any of God's demands. We're not even close. That's because we are born in bondage to sin, just as we confess this morning in the confession. We are full of sins and iniquities. We have offended God and we just, justly deserve his temporal and eternal punishment. Like the terrible two-year-old or the trying teenager, we are rebellious, continually rebelling against God. As such, many don't want any part of him, his grace, his gifts, or his gathering us together to himself. They want to be independent of him. They want to keep some distance between themselves and God, to keep some separation from him. But we need to be careful what we ask for, because that's exactly what hell is. Hell is separation from God, eternal separation from him, living in total condemnation. From this preserve us, Heavenly Father. Also, when young people disobey their parents and want nothing to do with them, their parents will still love them, whether the children want them to or not. For all of you gathered here, even when you disobey God and break his commandments, remember that God still loves you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. God loves you and dearly desires to gather you together under the shadow of his mighty wings, to gather you made outcasts I sin to his holy mountain. But where is this mountain 
Is it Mount Sinai? No, that's where God gave it, us his law. Is it Mount Calvary? No, that's where Christ fulfilled the law in our place because we can't fulfill it. So where is this holy mountain? On this side of heaven, this is God's holy mountain right here. This is his house of prayer. This is his Mount Zion because here is where God freely gives his, gives his gifts to his people. The gifts Jesus won for you on Mount Calvary, he gives you right here. On Mount Sinai, God gave us his law in the Ten Commandments. On Mount Calvary, Christ gave his body and shed his blood on the cross for you. On Mount Zion here, God gives you the gifts Christ won for you on the cross, namely the forgiveness of sins, eternal life and salvation. By the blood Christ shed on the cross as he died for you and me, your sins are forgiven. As you heard me announce earlier, not my forgiveness, but God's forgiveness. God has gathered us in this sanctuary to give us his forgiveness by his word spoken in the absolution read from the bible and preached in the sermon it is god's word and he speaks his word into our ears promising you that he has forgiven you your sins for the sake of his son whose body was nailed to the cross and his blood poured out for you this is the very same body and blood he gives us when he gathers us at his table. His body and blood in, with and under the bread and wine. Given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. There's no need for burnt offerings or sacrifices. For Christ offered up the perfect sacrifice on the altar of the cross. And in response to our, to the love our Lord God has first shown us, we will get to pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. These are our acts of spiritual sacrifice, done not to gain God's favour, but as a sign that we already have God's favour. We also get to bring aid and comfort to those who are in need, showing others the love God has first shown us, so that by the Holy Spirit at work in them, as the Lord says through Isaiah, I will gather to them besides those already being gathered. God accomplishes this as he gathers us to himself, sending his Holy Spirit into our hearts through baptism and the word as the Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it united with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. And on the last day he will raise, up, raise us up and all the dead and give eternal life to us and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true, as Luther says in the third article of the Creed. God grant this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I ask you now to rise and join with me as we confess our common faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated to sing the next song, Kyrie Eleison. Kiss me with your tenderness 
Thank you, Lord, for accepting us and people from all backgrounds into your kingdom, Gentiles as well as Jews, the outsiders as well as those who have grown up in the church. Help us to accept other people as, as you do. Use us and our gifts to reach out to those in need. Amen. In our Gospel for today we heard the Canaanite woman come to Jesus, trusting that he would hear and help her. Let us now turn to our Heavenly Father, praying for ourselves and our world. Merciful Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Church as we await the return of our Lord Jesus. Help us to remain true to your word and to live and worship in such a way that we reflect your life into the world around us. Forgive us when we are distracted by worldly concerns and forget to trust in you. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord have mercy on us. Give us open hearts and minds to spread your love and grace to all people. Let our words and actions reach out to those whom society treats as unclean and show them your good news. Remind us that we are all unclean until we come to know you and receive your forgiveness. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord God, we pray for the Jewish people and for the nation of Israel in troubled times. We pray for all those who live in war-ravaged nations and plead with you for an end to the suffering in countries hard hit by the COVID-19 virus at this time. May justice be maintained and may leaders do what is right to care for their people. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord God of peace and love, uphold all those joined in marriage, strengthen their relationships and their faith in you. We pray for people in all kinds of families and those who support them. We pray especially for Lutheran Community Care as they work to support people who are struggling in many ways in our society. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord have God of hope and healing, be with the sick and frail, especially people overwhelmed by coronavirus and the restrictions we face. Comfort those who and restore our trust and hope in you when we struggle under life's burdens. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord At this time, O oh God, we continue to bring you thanks and praise for the rich blessing of continued rain on our land. You've sent us soft, gentle, soaking rain, uh, which is going to do our gardens and crops uh, the world of good. We pray that you'll continue to look favourably on the growing season and also on those areas that have not received that rain as you have blessed us. Grant them such a blessing according to your will. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord Yesterday was VP Day, Victory in the Pacific. It was also a special anniversary the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. RSLs in Australia and all around the Allied world commemorated this milestone in the world's freedom. 
This coming Tuesday is the 54th anniversary of the Battle of Long Tan, an important battle in the Vietnam War. It is also the annual Vietnam Veterans Day. So on Tuesday, Vietnam veterans and their families will pay tribute to those who served, suffered and died in, and as a result of, the Vietnam War. They will honour the service of 60,000 Australians who served in the Vietnam War, and we remember the sacrifice of 521 Australians who lost their lives in this conflict. Let us pray. Lord God, we remember today the horrors of war and the mercies of your providence in the past. We give you thanks for those who have served in our armed forces and the families that have loved them, missed their presence, interceded for them in prayer and rejoiced in their return. But especially we pray for those families who did not see their loved ones return because they gave their lives in defence of freedom and this land that we love. May we never forget the sacrifices that have been made for us by these courageous men and women. Lord God of the nations, we pray according to your good and gracious will that you would grant peace among the nations in this time as well. Put into the hearts of rulers and nations to avert the, the desire for bloodshed, strife and selfishness and cause all to see the folly of war. You offer to all eternal peace in Christ. May your gospel be proclaimed that the foundation of love may be laid in Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, as weak and sinful human beings, we come to you asking for your mercy. Listen to our cry for help and hear our prayers. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks in Christ. It is indeed right and good, Lord God, Holy Father, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. He overcame death by his resurrection and opened up for us the way to eternal life with you. And so, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we adore and praise your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup after the supper and when he had given thanks he gave to them and said Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Gracious Father, we therefore remember the sacrifice of our Lord in celebration as we receive his body and blood with this bread and wine. We rejoice to receive all that he has done for us in his life and death, his resurrection and ascension, and we wait for his coming again to share with us the heavenly feast. Fill us with your Holy Spirit 
that we who receive the body and blood of Christ may live as true members of the body of your Son. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Come, everything is ready.
Christ is with us. He is with us. Know His praise. Find His peace. Peace on Jesus here. In this prayer, there is healing. In this Let us pray together post-communion prayer. Almighty and merciful God, you fulfilled our human longing for justice and peace when your Son came as a human being. As we have received his body and blood in this sacrament, may he shine in our lives so that all who see us may be drawn to him as their only Saviour. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with peace, with favour and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, trusting the Lord for all you need. Please be seated to sing the closing song, Wherever I Go, Whatever I Do. <laughs>
the weather may change, but you're still here. Jesus, you're the light along the journey. You're the destination of the road. You provide the signs along the highway. You're the destination of the road. through it so thank you very much Terry and the, uh, the band thank you so much um, thank you Pastor Graham for worship this morning um, faith is the key to receiving God's blessings uh, of Christ regardless of whatever we are whoever we are aren't we all over the world so thank you so much um, enjoy the uh, week and uh, God bless uh, church next Sunday is at nine o'clock here at Madam any other announcements we're leaving by both exits, are we, no, Terry? Uh, well, everyone goes from the back first, out the rear, except for the people that are seated in the front here can leave from the front exit. And collection will be offered on the way out. Correct. Pastor Graham? Before you go, this week I had a phone call from Pastor Peter Bush, and he and his wife, uh, Carol, wish to be remembered to those of you who remember him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Breezes with
sí, sí.